Did you hear about the chicken who could only lay eggs in the winter? She was no spring chicken. What kind of chicken grows on a tree? Poultry. Why did the chicken join a band? Because it already had drumsticks. Why did the chicken cross the basketball court? She heard the referee calling fouls. Had enough? I've got millions of them. And it's all in honor of our menu today. Creamy braised chicken with fennel, preserved lemon, and semi-dried tomatoes. Well, uh, one more. How does a chicken mail a letter to her friend? In a envelope. <laughs> I'm Garrett Shack, and that's what we're cooking on the coast. chicken cross the road halfway. She wanted to lay it on the line and today we lay it on the line as we prepare creamy braised chicken with fennel, preserved lemon and semi-dried tomatoes. Forget the comedy, let's get cooking. <laughs> Probably a good idea to forget the comedy today isn't it? All right first thing we want to do season up some lovely organic chicken thighs here. If you can try to get it from a local butcher. We want the bone left in for this recipe. That's really key to this because it's gonna release some flavors as it cooks. And as we know from watching Cooking on the Coast, as you do, you know that braising is a way of getting ultimate flavor out of your cooking process. Lots of salt and pepper on there. There we go. And then we've got a pan that started to heat. And I add a little bit of olive oil here. There we go. Watch that olive oil dance a little bit. And then we'll go ahead and add this chicken right to it. You see I'm using tongs here. Don't want to have to touch the chicken. Salmonella, we got to be cautious of. Whenever you're handling raw chicken, make sure you wash your hands afterwards, so on and so forth. Okay, get a nice sizzle in there, which is great. Season the other side. Salt, pepper again. And then we'll go back to the cutting board and start chopping some vegetables. So as we said for this dish, we've got some fennel. Look at that, doesn't that look great? You can eat the whole thing. The stems are edible, the leaves here, the fennel fronds are edible, the bulbous bottom here, edible as well. For the time being, we just want the bulbous part. Shave that piece off right there. There you go. This is actually a member of the parsley family, if you, uh, if you were curious for those fun facts about, uh, about some of the vegetables we use. We're gonna quarter this guy and this one. So the flavor of the fennel is really complimentary to chicken. It's got this anise type flavor. So it's sort of like black licorice. Just get those in there, start them sauteing. Half an onion, chop this guy up really quickly. Nice sharp knife helps here, that'll keep you from crying. We know you're not upset about the cutting up the onion, it's just the tears, you know, they start flowing. There we go, peel away that outer layer of skin. And then we'll give it a quick slice. There we are. Break them up a little bit and then we'll add these into the pan as well. There we go. And at the same time, we'll have a peek at our chicken thighs there and flip them over. Because we should be starting to get some color on those guys now. Yeah, it's great. There we are. Do a quick chop of some garlic. And then we'll get that ready to go into the oven. Nice rough chop here. I like to find a nice big garlic chunk in there, as you all know. There it goes. Developing those layers of flavor. All that stuff that's caught on the bottom of the pan is exactly what we want in there. That garlic, the fennel, the onions. It's all gonna come together. There we are. We wanna get some white wine in there. This is where we're gonna develop our sauce. A little white wine. And then we've got some really nice chicken stock here. Whenever you can, buy the best quality stock you can or make your own even better. Put that in there. Now, this is where we want to be a little bit cautious. We don't want to cover this all the way over. Just like that. So that skin that's going to be on top is going to start to roast. We're not covering our pan when we go to the oven. It's going to start to roast on top and that skin will come out nice and crispy and the sauce will start to reduce. Okay, so let's get this into the oven. go. All right, we'll come back for that in a second. 350 degree oven. It's probably going to take about 45 minutes or so, but I'll show you a little trick how to test that in a second. 
Before we go to break, I want to quickly show you our oven roasted tomatoes. So I'm going to slice up some Roma tomatoes here, just quarter them. For each chicken thigh, we want about one tomato. Okay, that's what we sort of budgeted for in this recipe here. So we got one, two, three, that's enough. We're going to lay them out on our sheet pan. And dress them simply with a little olive oil, fresh cracked pepper. Fire them in there, give yourself a little bit of space so that the moisture has a chance to evaporate. Because as we roast these, they're going to start to develop a little extra flavor. There we go, pepper on each one. And then some olive oil, and we'll fire these guys into the oven as well. All right. Okay. Follow me to the oven, camera 17. Here we go. <laughs> we'll be back later in the show to pull together our creamy braised chicken with fennel, preserved lemon, and semi-dried tomatoes. But don't go away. Right after the break, we're heading out on the road. You won't want to miss that. Exhausting morning, hanging out at the beach. All you want is something great to eat. And aren't I in luck? There's a food truck hanging out right here. Let's go see what they got going on. Hey, Kelly, how you doing? How you doing, Gary? Nice hey, to meet you. Nice to meet you too, yeah. Thanks very much for having me here today. Thank you very much. Talk to me about Peppermint's Grill. What's, uh, what's special and unique about it? Well, Peppermint's Grill, I emphasize mostly on local, good quality mm -hmm. stuff, and organic. So I do different types of gourmet hot dogs, tacos, smokies. My specialty is a pulled barbecue chicken sandwich. Oh yeah, that sounds delicious. A lot of times people ask me, uh, is Pepper Man your last name? And I say, no, I wish it was. So it's a pretty cool name. <laughs> yeah. I've had a nickname for many years. Uh, when I was younger, I started eating hot, hot peppers. And cool. I like making his food uh, nice and hot and spicy. Hot and spicy food, I like it. Yeah. So uh, you got some special ingredients in there that will knock some people's socks off, I hear. Well, I could burn your face off if I wanted to. Oh yeah? Well, please, uh, this is my money maker right here, so no. don't go doing that. But no. uh, I don't mind it a little bit spicy. Yeah. So, uh, and then how do you go about doing that? Like, do you have chili paste or what? what, what uh... So I try to do um, fresh peppers, like habaneros, oh, okay. serranos, Thai chilies. Oh, I also yeah. do hot sauces as well, but uh, the fresh stuff is better. The fresh stuff, yeah, that's yeah. where all the heat is, right? Yeah. Cool, well, do we want to go back and show me how you whip something up? I can do it. Let's do that. All right, Garrett, go ahead and open that grill. It's ready for us. Yeah, let's have a look, Kelly. Oh, look at that. Oh, yeah. Nice Beautiful. and toasty. Nice toasted uh, Profino uh, peasant buns. All right, so uh, what are you making here? This is uh, one of your specialties, right? Well, this is typically what I make at farmer's markets, and this is a seller here. Normally, I sell out by the afternoon. This is my pulled barbecue chicken sandwich. Oh, nice. So yeah. it goes on a peasant bun, real simple, some lettuce, some sautéed onions, yeah. uh, house-made, my own barbecue sauce. So that's your own secret recipe? Own secret recipe. It's a, I call it the wonder sauce, because <laughs> it can sauce. go on anything. Let me tell you, hopefully when you try it, you can call it the wonder sauce as well. Nice, okay. So let's start putting it together. Yeah, for sure. So it's a real simple sandwich. But uh, it packs a lot of taste, so some nice organic spring mixed lettuce here. Very nice, looks great, nice and fresh. Oh. And we'll put on some sautéed onions. Onions next. Now, Kelly, what uh, what got you into this uh, into this business here? Well, long story short, because if I give you the long story, you might run out of film. <laughs> but uh, when I was younger, I used to work at some uh, restaurants here and there. One of my friends, best friends back in the day, we wanted to open up. Uh, Kind of about the Blues Brothers Soul Shop, right? But, yeah, yeah. Uh, it never happened. We both got married. Life went on and kind of stuff. And um, but I've always had this dream in the back of my mind that I'd like to open up something. And so yeah. started a food cart. Kind of said, you know what? This might bring the dream together one day and slowly build a reputation. Yeah. And then one day may open up a little cafe or something like that, right? Oh, nice. Yeah. So, yeah. so start with the mobile one and then move to brick and mortar at some point? Something like that. Very so nice. So this is the wonder sauce. I have to say that chicken smells fabulous. Thank you, sir. So is it, a, is it like a long cooking process? Does it cook for quite a while? Well, I get it as a rotisserie chicken and then I shred it. Yeah, And then nice. when I warm it up and let it kind of marinate into the sauce, it just brings just brings yeah. a really good juice in my it's, wife. It smells delicious. So you you cook it or you warm it up in this sauce. In, in my sauce, in correct. the wonder yeah, sauce. In yeah. the wonder sauce. And my wife says it looks good enough to eat. So <laughs> well, if that's what the wife says, it's probably true. There, so you can grab so that. Close that up. 
and uh, I'm I sure can... you will probably need a few napkins. I was going to say, you're reaching for napkins. That generally means I'm going to need them already. I used to have bibs, but I ran out. <laughs> awesome. Look at that. That's going to be a great bite right there. I can't wait to dig it. I feel like I'm like on uh, triple D right now. I'm just waiting, you know, for the, the bloopers to happen at the end of the yeah, show. Here, exactly. Right? We don't have any bloopers. This is all real right here. This is the real that deal. That is delicious. Mm. That's the real deal. That sauce is incredible. It really is. Thank you. Yeah. It's wonderful. It's wonderful. It's the wonder sauce. It's the wonder, wonderful sauce. I'm going to have another bite here, Kelly. It's kind of a, a mixture of what I call a Cajun Mexican barbecue sauce. Mm. I've had lots of barbecue sauces in my life. I love barbecue sauce. I can put it on anything. That's not a lie. And uh, But I wanted something that was unique, mm -hmm. something different. And you're a chef, obviously. You Most definitely tasted got lots of sauces. Absolutely. It's got a nice balance. It's really lovely. I can see that you got some herbs and spices in there. So juicy. Yeah. Absolutely delicious. I think before I go, I should get a couple of uh, hot peppers on there, hey, just to see. Make sure we keep the face throw, alive, but let's see what we can there. do. <laughs> well, we can do that for you. Give it a try. So as you can tell, I'm looking at this right here. You've got habanero, mm. serrano, and red Thai chili peppers. That this looks stuff, spicy. This stuff mm. could burn a face off, but we won't do that. Yeah, don't go, don't go too heavy. There you go. That'll be good. There we go. We'll kind of just spread, spread it around, around a little bit. A little bit and Ted, like, Ted likes it spicy too, right? So we can, uh, there we go. We can tease him with it a little bit. All right. Now one more bite before we... Uh, before I head back off to the kitchen here. If I, I, see an, I see a habanero right there. You gotta yeah, go for the that's, habanero. That's, that's why I'm avoiding that one. All right, I'll go for the habanero. <laughs> he, ta he taunted me into it. I'll go for the habanero. Here we go. I was telling Garrick early in the week I was doing the Inferno dog as one of my special dogs. And uh, I let people know in advance that this is a very spicy dog. And uh, some people cried that day <laughs> out of joy, I'm sure. There were tears of joy. Tears there of were joy tears for the Inferno dog. That's correct. <laughs> Awesome. Well, mm. it definitely pulls it all together too with a little bit of nice heat. It's starting to feel it in the back of my throat a little bit. That's fantastic. Yeah. Thanks, Kelly. Gary, thank Appreciate you. Appreciate you having me here today. Thank you, guys. What do you call a crazy chicken? A cuckoo cluck. <laughs> yes, we're back to our kitchen and working on creamy braised chicken with fennel, preserved lemon, and semi-dried tomatoes. All right, I wanna to put together a little garnish for this dish because there's not really a whole lot of crunch involved at this point. So we're gonna do a little bit of some crispy onions. Just got a nice sharp mandolin here. I'll do a few onions. We don't need a whole lot. Maybe one more slice. And we're gonna put this into some rice flour with some seasoning and just let it sit there just for a few moments. We want that rice flour to start to absorb some, absorb some of the moisture that's, uh, that's surrounding those onions. There we are, and I'm just gonna put a pinch of salt in there because salt's delicious. All right, now let's check on what we had going on in the oven. There's a couple things that need to come out now. We've got our chicken that's been braising, and this looks incredible. Holy smokes, look at that. Golden brown, absolutely spectacular. And it smells amazing. You get that really fennel, uh, anise-type smell out of there. It looks incredible. Let's just see how the sauce is reduced. Yeah, amazing. Now, our sauce isn't quite done yet, but let's have a look at our tomatoes. We'll get those out of the oven as well here. I'm going to turn that on. Let's get those tomatoes out of the oven. There we go. Set them down just right here by our onions. Now, you can see they've kind of gotten a little dark around the edges, and that's okay, that's fine. You don't have to use them if you don't want to, but you could. But these are gonna be really intense flavor. That sweetness of that tomato is really gonna come out nicely there. All right, now, turn our attention to our sauce. What we need to do is finish this up, because as you know from the recipe, it's a creamy braised chicken. So we're gonna add a little bit of cream to that and let it reduce. And are you thinking, oh, Gary, here goes Garrett again with his butter and his cream but not too, not too much, okay? That's what, maybe two, three tablespoons in there, and that's just gonna add this really nice richness to that dish. We want some tarragon. Tarragon and chicken, hand in hand. There is a slight anise flavor to the tarragon as well. It's a small shrub. It propagates itself. Uh, tarragon's interesting because it propagates itself through the roots and not through seeds. Some interesting facts about this, uh, this delicious herb here. 
Okay, we're gonna give this a rough chop. There we are. Not too fine. On some of those nice pieces so that when you actually get a bite, you get this sort of fresh fennel flavor or tarragon flavor. There we go. And then some of our trusty preserved lemons. From those of you that follow the show, you know I love using preserved lemon. I like to keep some of it in the fridge, on hand, ready to throw in any kind of dish. Just squeeze out some of that. There we are. We're gonna use about a quarter of this uh, lemon this time. Shave away some of the insides. And then we'll dice it up. There we go. This is gonna add a henty saltiness. Got that sort of acidic, nice sour flavor from the lemon. All these things will just kick up the flavors of this dish a little bit. Okay, our trusty wooden spoon to give it a little stir and then we'll give our sauce a taste before we fry up some of those onions. There we go. And let's go to the pot for our deep frying. So you wanna shake off any excess rice flour. We're using rice flour because it keeps this dish gluten-free but also because it gives a really nice crunch to the, uh, to the dish. In it goes, make sure you use a pot that's deep enough. You've heard me say this over and over again on the show. You really have to make sure it's deep enough. You can see they're bubbling away as I drop them in, which is perfect. And while those are cooking, we'll give our sauce a little taste and adjust the seasonings. A spoon. All right, let's check this sauce here. Mmm. So nice. Like I said before, we haven't added too much cream to this to make it like really rich and, and stick to your roof of your mouth. This is really like a light dish, even though it's got some cream in it. And add a little, uh, little hot sauce just to add some, you know, kick to it. A little bit of the brown sauce here. Again, these just create depths of flavor. When people eat it, eat it they go, oh, what the heck's going on in that, uh, in that dish there? What's that flavor I see? Or I'm tasting. <laughs> Pretty hard to see flavors, isn't it? And we're gonna adjust the seasoning with a little more salt. Beautiful. And the last thing we wanna do is add some of our oven dried tomatoes right to this dish. So I'm gonna collect a few of these here. All right. And these are gonna release some color and some flavor as well. Three more, sure. We're here. There we go. Oh, we're getting close. See how that's thickened up nicely there? Can you see that on the camera? I sure hope so, because that's what this is all about. Just getting that beautiful, rich. Mm. Oh man, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to share this dish. <laughs> that's delicious. Okay, let's get our chicken onto the plate. One, two, three beautiful pieces. Look, you can see how crispy that chicken skin is right there. Golden brown. Put a few pieces of this fennel in there. Get those tomatoes, all that tarragon. Then I'm gonna go ahead and use this spoon right here to make sure we get enough sauce on there. Oh, there we go. Brilliant, and then for a little bit of crunch, we wanna check on our onions. Whenever you're stirring the onions, you can kind of feel they get crispy in the oil here. Let's chop up a little fennel to help season those guys. Got some of these fennel fronds. Remember in the beginning of the show, I mentioned that you can eat the entire thing. So I'm gonna take a few of the fronds, add some lovely color. We're gonna use this to actually season our onions. As we know, anything coming out of a deep fryer has to be seasoned right away with some salt and then whatever other flavor you wanna to add to it, just make things even better. So let's get these guys out of here. See, they're starting to turn a lovely golden brown. I can hear the crunch on them. Make sure to just get as much of that oil off as we can. There we go. And then right away with some salt. Lovely. Some of those chopped up fennel fronds on there. Immediately, as soon as the heat hits those fennel fronds, it just starts to kind of sing and with, uh, with, with that smell, it's just incredible. There we go. Okay, and then we'll just place a couple of these right on top. Some lovely crispy texture. All right, maybe a tomato or two. Just for some extra bright color. And there you have it. 
creamy braised chicken with fennel, preserved lemon, and semi-dried tomatoes. Looks awesome. You could probably even put this. Now I can't think of a better way to enjoy this dish than with an amazing local craft beer. With me today is Michael from Category 12 Brewing. How you doing, Michael? Great, Garrett. Thank Thanks you. Thanks for being here today. Thanks for having me. What have you brought along? Well, we've brought um, a beer from the Belgian side of our lineup. This is our unsanctioned Saison. Okay. And uh, this beer is not about the hops. This one's about the yeast and the malt bill. Nice. So, I like it. Yeah, so many, so many beers nowadays, particularly the craft beers on the Pacific Northwest here, are just packed full of hops, hey? Tastes like, tastes like you're eating a hop every time you have a sip of one. It's near and dear to my heart, but this is, uh, you know, definitely on the Belgian side of the family, yep. where um, in this beer we've got a little bit of uh, clove coming through from the yeast. Oh, nice. Yeah, it's really interesting. So we don't add any spices to this beer, oh, okay. but you should pick up so a little So this is all just clove. natural flavors that you pick up from the, from the malt and the yeast and... Exactly. Oh, it smells fantastic. Oh, yeah. I love the color as well, it looks great. Let's see how it holds up to the dish here. Excellent. So there's fennel in here, and dig in, there's a bone in that chicken, but uh, just grab out. your knife and pull it apart there. Oh yeah. Some fennel, some uh, some lemon, I think the clove is gonna go really nicely with it. We got an easy chip flavor. Mm. Chicken's still nice and moist, hey? Eh? Mm. <laughs> mm. Mm, definitely. Mm. Interesting. I didn't really smell the cloves off the hop there, but off the hop. <laughs> that's, a beer, that's a beer joke for anybody watching yeah. at home. I didn't really smell the cloves right away, but uh, it really seems to accentuate with that with the anise. Yeah, that's what's really neat about beer pairing, is that the beer will play off the food and the food will play off the beer. And this beer, as it warms up in the glass, really starts to unfold and you get a yeah. bit of the malt um, spiciness coming out. Nice. And uh, yeah, it's a delicious pair. Well, I think so. Category 12 definitely does some some really interesting beers and you're, you're about, you know, really great beer rather than uh, just packing things full of hops and away you go, right? So We try to cool. play to both sides of that. Yeah. Exactly. Nice. Cool. Thanks, Michael. Thanks, Garrett. Just one sec here. Check out our website where you'll find more information on today's show and maybe a few surprises. I'm Garrett Shack. Thanks for watching and don't forget to savor the flavor. So now the best part is we get to eat the rest of this.